what we actually know is probably much more limited than what we pretend we know. Right, right. And so, uh, in answer to your question, you know, neurons are electrochemical devices. Right, right? okay, so we have the, the whole thing. We have electromagnetic chemical. <laughs> exactly. So if you think about it, what happens in a neuron, I mean, uh -huh. the main function of a neuron, is electrical impulses pass down and are, are received by neurons, which are given to the neurons through chemicals which cause the changes in the electrical uh, the electrical substance of the neuron. So simplified, well it can't be simplified, it is all of the above. Yes. And we find out every day how much more complicated it is. It's like uh, getting a microscope mm -hmm. and, and you pull it out and you think you almost know something about the cell until you grab out the electron microscope and then you realize all the stuff you were missing before. Mm. And that's happening more and more. And yeah. we're getting better and better at understanding what's going on. Well I think it's really important because we have you know approximately 460,000 people, soldiers, with uh, traumatic brain injury, TBI, to varying degrees, mild to severe. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we have a lot of depression with that. Yeah. And I think it's going to be very, very important to provide an alternative to that population, you know, who've had some traumatic brain injuries. Have you been working with, with those at all? I haven't been working with traumatic brain injuries, but it's funny you should bring that up. Actually, that, as I said, TMS is a tool. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can do all sorts of cool things with it. it. At high frequencies, you can teach the the neurons to fire more rapidly for blood to flow to the area. Mm -hmm. If you give it low frequencies, you can induce them to slow down. Mm -hmm. So it's a tool that you have. It's kind of like a scalpel. You know, right. you can use a scalpel however you want. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they're actually really studying that's, that's really promising is in stroke victims. Mm -hmm. um, and they're getting some robust results that are starting to come out. And like I mentioned before, chronic pain, mm -hmm. uh, migraines. You have all sorts of areas it's going to be applied to. And, uh, and this is only the one, you know, there, there happened to be enough financial push in depression for a company to fork out the the massive amounts of money to get mm -hmm. large multi-center trials, and then that was duplicated by a non, uh, a non, um, industry-sponsored study mm -hmm. that had almost the exact same responses, mm -hmm. the exact same numbers, and because of that push, you got this treatment for depression. But really, there are vast implications of having a tool yes. that we don't even have to, we don't have to use in one way or another. Right. Well, that's very exciting. I mean, with all the Alzheimer's out there and all the chronic pain, I mean, the, it seems like the possibilities are endless. Well, and it gets even cooler in that some of the technology out there, as I said, you know, this hits about three or four centimeters deep. Mm -hmm. There are actually new coils that are coming out that can penetrate deeper into various brain structures. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, you know, we can do really significant things without ever breaking open the scalp. Okay, so potentially even spinal injuries might be down the road? Uh, it hasn't been applied for spinal injuries, and it doesn't induce healing. It changes the, the electrical um, conduction. Okay. But I, I mean, you, can, you can modulate the neuronal activity mm -hmm. as, as much as, as you want with this, with this device, theoretically, down the line. So how does it work with chronic pain? Um, how, how does it uh, affect pain? Well, they did a study mm -hmm. uh, that, that took normal volunteers, you know, mm -hmm. you or I, that mm -hmm. would go in, and they would actually subject a chemical on the skin that actually hurts. Mm -hmm. And they did it to the same area, actually, the, the same point, the left dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, um, right here. And uh, they did the same protocol as for depression. And they found that the, the results for the pain sensation over that area was about half on an analog scale. So if I would have said it was eight, mm -hmm then I probably would have said when I had this treatment, it was a four, okay. which is kind of cool. Now, the reason is why. I mean, yeah. there's no, this isn't, this isn't our sensory cortex, this mm -hmm. isn't anything of that sort, but it communicates the thought is with the thalamus, which mm -hmm. basically regulates all of the inputs from, from our body. Mm -hmm. And it may be acting, again, this is all speculation, we like to pretend we know more than we do, but it may act as a little bit of a policeman there on the, on the incoming impulses, saying, slow down, slow down, we don't need to worry about that too much, mm -hmm. let's, let's, not, let's not worry about that pain sensation. Mm -hmm. And as it regulates that, are therefore our sensation of the pain, since the signals don't get all the way up to the cortex, is therefore decreased which is, would be a miraculous tool. That's amazing, yeah. Well, it's so exciting, the idea that depression is reversible. I mean, anybody who's dealing with repression, depression probably feels like they don't, they're out of options and nothing has worked. And it's very exciting to think that we can create a shift, especially in non-surgical, non-medication. That's so exciting. Uh, it definitely is. And, you know, I, 
this is this is one step towards more. Mm -hmm. But as we go on, there's there's some research out there called um, deep brain stimulation, which is for the refractory of the refractory. These are the patients that have failed all medications and they've failed ECT and they've failed everything. Mm -hmm. uh, there have done, been a number of studies over in Boston that I, that I had the opportunity to be uh, involved with uh, uh, peripherally, very peripherally, mm -hmm. with some of the research and, um, and you know, just watching them placed. And they'll, they'll do a neurosurgical placement of a probe, which obviously is not something that is ever going to become routine for depression. Mm -hmm. But this is more of a research study, and of course they were all consented, and they were desperate at this mm -hmm. point. Nothing else had worked. And with some of these placements of these electrodes, they could turn off the depression literally like a switch. Wow. Which is amazing. Yes. I mean, the fact that you could just do an electrical impulse in half the patients, and half of them, when they turned them on in the room, mm -hmm. they'd just say, it looks like a, like a cloud has lifted. Or they'd say, yes. The room has gotten brighter. Right, right. There's all there's yes. there's huge implications, and and hopefully at some point we'll be able to do that same sort of thing, mm -hmm. but not with ever doing the neurosurgery without right. with just placing it and having it target just the right area. Uh huh. Interesting. So, um, have you experienced the treatment yourself? Have you been a patient of it, or at least as? I haven't. Okay. Um, uh -huh. It's it's something that I've I've had a great deal of interest in because I saw uh, the need for it when I was in my training. I'd mm -hmm. see these depressed patients who would come through, and particularly, right. I got I got involved in the treatment of depression when I saw these very robust results happen with uh, with ECT, and I'd see people that were uh, that were in a complete cloud. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen patients who have literally just been down, they couldn't talk to, they, they were catatonic, mm -hmm. they were the depressed of the depressed. Mm -hmm. And uh, with one of the patients, um, the, the, the daughter said to me, you know, she's not like this, she's usually such a cheery person. And here I'm seeing this person who's just cuddled up, looking down, kind of moving her feet back and forth and can't talk with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And over the matter of about three, four weeks, mm -hmm. she went from that to being one of the most vibrant, mm -hmm. bright, mm -hmm. and just, just stand up people you'd ever want to meet. Mm -hmm. And that's what really kind of moved me along this, this uh, discovery of, of, of treatments for depression and realizing there was so much more than just these medications that just have such dismal efficacy. We, yeah. we have to get better. Right. So you have one of these devices here in Hawaii and there's right. one at Tripler Army Medical Center. Yes. Is there anyone else in Hawaii or you're the only guy in town? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, even with the military, it's limited to just the military population. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I tried before I got my TMS machine here. Yeah. I was asking them, saying, you know, can I get some of my patients in? Uh -huh. uh, what would it take for yeah. me to get a patient in there? And it yeah. was strictly limited to, to military personnel. Right. And so that's when I brought my machine on board and, and mm -hmm. so far it's the only one. And the problem right now is that insurance companies are a little reluctant to, to address it. So right now it's on their do not pay for list. Mm -hmm. And the data is overwhelming that it's not experimental anymore. But right. they often like to hide behind the facade of experimental to not fork out money for, for uh, a treatment that can be costly. Mm -hmm. And realistically what they'll tell you is they'll say, well, you know, we can pay X amount for TMS or we can pay X amount for electroshock therapy. And electroshock therapy is more effective, so go for electroshock. Mm -hmm. And the counter argument to that is, yeah, but you're talking a major step between medications and electroshock and there's a nice in-between that has efficacy and they may not need to go to that level. Mm -hmm. And so we're currently, you know, I'm, I'm talking back and forth with a few insurance companies on the island trying to let them recognize that this should be covered more universally. Yeah. I think once it happens, it'll be broadly used. Right. But until then, I mean, it's cost prohibitive for a lot of people. Yes. And that becomes a problem. Right. So what's it going to take to get the insurance companies to recognize this? Well, it, it, takes, it takes education. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've gone through only a, a couple back and forth with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've given them the data and mm -hmm. they've processed it. and. It always takes a couple tiers of back and forth. And I hope that after a couple tiers of back and forth, and they look at the data and they, they say it can't be experimental. Um, I had one, one uh, person uh, who said experimental just means it's, it's used in the community. And I argued, no, experimental means we don't know what the outcome is. And we have data that says the outcome is X. And you know, these are two really good studies and lots of other smaller studies. And, and he 
got, went back to the point where, where he says, well, that's using the other definition of experimental. Experimental to us means it's widely used. And that, that gets that uh, aspect of, well, which came first, the chicken or the egg? It's never going to be widely used if you don't cover it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't cover it, it will never be widely used. And therefore, it will never be non-experimental. Right. So. Yeah. The old catch-22. <laughs> it is. The, the ultimate catch-22. Yes. Well, this has been very exciting information. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. I'm glad that there are people who are brave enough like you to chart new territory and, and to make the ex investment in training and getting the technology here in Hawaii. And I hope that the insurance companies will recognize the value and the efficacy of it soon. I think they will. Yes. I, I think that it's, it's overwhelmingly positive that it helps patients and generally with a little bit of... of uh, of enlightenment, generally they, they move towards a direction of helping patients. It just takes a little bit of prodding occasionally. Yes, great. Well, I want to say thank you for being here with us. I've been speaking with Dr. Jeremy Roberts, and this is very exciting work, TMS. I hope you'll do the research and maybe learn a little bit more about it. As always, I'm glad to have you out there watching The Genie Show. We'll see you again soon. Aloha for now.